Welcome back to 24 Days of Christmas, 24 Chapters of Luke. Today we'll start in Luke chapter 3. And it's a real treat for you. We get to witness the baptism of Jesus. But more importantly, we get to the genealogy of Je Jesus. So, Jesus' ancestors. And you get to listen to me butcher ancient Hebrew names for like three minutes. So enjoy. Now in the 15th year of Emperor Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod Atipus was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Etoria and Trachinonius, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priest, in the high priesthood of, An of Annas and Caliphas, his son-in-law, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he went into all the country around Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As it is written and forever remains written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of the one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight. Every ravine shall be filled up, and every mountain and hill shall be leveled, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough roads smooth, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. So he began saying to the crowds who were coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you, who warned you to flee from the wrath of God? God that is to come, therefore produce fruit that is worthy of and consistent with your repentance, that is, live change lives, turn from sin and seek God and his righteousness, and do not even begin to say to yourselves as a defense, we have Abraham for our father, and so our heritage assures us salvation. For I say to you that from these stones, God is able to raise up children, for Abraham, for God can replace the unrepentant, regardless of their heritage, with those who are obedient. Even now the axe of God's judgment is swinging toward the roots of the trees. And so every tree that does not produce good fruit is being cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, Then what are we to do? And John replied, The man who has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And he who has food is to do the same. Even some tax collectors came to be baptized and asked, Teacher, what are we to do? And he told them, Collect no more than the fixed amount you have been ordered to collect. Some soldiers asked him, And what about us? What are we to do? And he replied to them, Do not extort money from anyone or harass or blackmail anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were in a state of expectation. And all were wondering in their hearts about John, as to whether he was the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed. John answered them all by saying, As for me, I baptize you only with water, but the one who is mightier, more powerful, more noble than I is coming, and I am not fit to untie the strap of his sandals, even as his slave. He will baptize you who truly repent with the Holy Spirit, and you who remain unrepentant with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to thoroughly clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat believers into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff, the unrepentant, with unquenchable fire. So with many other appeals and various admonitions, John preached the good news to the people. But when Herod, the tetrarch, was repeatedly reprimanded and convicted by John's disapproval for behaving, for having Herodias, his brother's wife, as his own, and for all the wicked things that Herod had done, he also added this to them. He, he also added this to them all. He locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, John, uh, Jesus was also baptized. And while he was praying, the visible heaven was opened. 
And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, my beloved. In you I am well pleased and delighted. When he began his ministry, Jesus himself was about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son by marriage of Eli, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Hesli, the son of Nagai, the son of Math, the son of Matthias, the son of Simeon, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah, the son of Joan, the son of Resha, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shithio, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Kosum, the son of Eliadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Matat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Elakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Methath, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Solomon, the son of Na Nashon, the son of Amadab, the son of Admin, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Haber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arpax, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Amal Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahali, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So hopefully I didn't butcher that too, too bad. But in the comments, you could always write down how many of them I actually did butcher, if you know the correct pronunciations. Blessings, and I hope you'll join me again tomorrow for Chapter 4. Good night.